Welcome back to the Dark Reading News Desk here at RSA 2023. Terry Sweeney here with Dark Reading, and joining me now is Brendan O'Connor, CEO and co-founder of App Omni. Brendan, thanks for joining us on the Dark Reading News Desk. Hey, thanks for having me, Terry. Great to be here. We are talking about uh, a successful SaaS security program, and with so many risks for CISOs and security teams uh, that begging for attention, um, why should a SaaS security program be uh, a high priority for them? I think it's absolutely become a, a high priority out of necessity. We've had more than 50 major SaaS breaches in the past two years. 80% of business applications are now software as a service. Uh, SaaS has become the OS of business, and we see attackers going after SaaS as an objective and able to get into information within the organization. You think about your SaaS applications, they house your payroll data, your HR data, all of the information on your customers, your IT sure. assets, and now even our security tools are SaaS. So that has now, the tools that we use to secure our enterprise are now part of that SaaS attack surface. Well, and Rare is the organization that uses just a single SaaS service, right? Absolutely. Uh, about 40% of global SaaS spend is for vendors. Microsoft, Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Workday. And that's the upper end of the market, but GitHub is in every organization. We see applications like DocuSign. You have uh, vertical applications like Viva for their healthcare and life sciences. There's whole industries where the major tools in the platform of that industry is a SaaS application. So it's common for uh, an organization to have dozens, if not more than 100, SaaS applications across their business. Okay, Let, let's drop down a level. Talk to us about some of the key components of a really good SaaS security program. You know, SaaS applications are different, but the thing that they all have in common is there's a few things you need to watch out for. First and foremost, configuration. What is the configuration? Then there's monitoring and threat activity. You know, SaaS is such a huge part of the enterprise, and we find that most organizations are not monitoring, getting logs, or getting threat intel feeds on those SaaS applications. Then there's the whole B2B connected app, third-party ecosystem. Mm. You think about a tool like GitHub, how many bots and workers and integrations do we have that only exist to plug into that code pipeline? Or tools like Teams and Slack and all of the integrations that we have there. So our SaaS attack surface is not just the major applications that we use, it's all these third-party connections that go into them. And then lastly, there's you know, compliance and data exposure. Who am I sharing my data with? Am I sharing it with them intentionally? Am I complying with industry regulations and standards? We often find that customers are inadvertently not complying with their industry regulations and standards because they don't know. They don't have visibility into how things are configured and who has access to their data. Um, rank rank the, the, the weakest links in the, in the chain, if you would. Uh, there's there's the, the user security, of course. There's the, the, the connection. Uh, Presumably, the, the software could also be compromised. Uh, what what is what does the, the the threat landscape look like from from that slice? You know, um, having run security at two of the major SaaS providers, I can tell you firsthand. Most of the time, it is not the code of the SaaS provider that's under attack. It's the configuration of the customer. Okay. You know, it's not the building that's insecure. It's you didn't lock your doors and windows. That's the challenge. So because you have ownership in SaaS throughout the business, you know, the team that owns HR is different than the sales team, is different than the finance team, they all administer their own SaaS applications. And they're not security experts. So they do silly things like enable the local web server and run it as system. So now you have your HR system on the public internet with escalated privileges, and anyone in the world can go talk to it and start asking it questions. We find the configuration piece leads to major data leaks. Half the time we walk into a customer, we find some of their most sensitive data leaking onto the internet on day one. Okay, um, you're, you're hinting at it here, but I'm, I'm curious what some of the most common and concerning risks you see in, in SaaS security. It, does, does it build on what you just described? Uh, absolutely, data exposure and misconfiguration is the number one way, and you know it's not a checklist of check for these three things. The way that you would misconfigure a, a Salesforce is different than a ServiceNow, is different than a Microsoft 365 or SharePoint. So each of these major applications, they have their own gotchas, and they have their own ways that people can shoot themselves in the foot uh, accidentally. But we also look at these third-party connections. We have breaches of these other companies like Travis CI, Circle CI, Heroku, mm -hmm. GitHub. Mm -hmm. They're going after what are these things connected to. And so, like we saw with the Solar Winds breach, attackers are very clever. They're going after the maintenance keys. They're going after the infrastructure. These API connections that humans don't generally use, but have access and are connected to everything. And those tools today are SaaS. And so that's what the attackers are targeting. 
And because it's not interactive or the security team may not even know that that connection exists or that API key or OAuth token was handed out to a third party, they're getting breached and you don't even know that you have compromised credentials in your environment today. It strikes me that uh, going back to your comment about the multiple SaaS applications that, <coughs> excuse me, that an organization may have in play, um, hygiene for HR may not look the same as, say, the, the best practices for, for finance. So companies which, which tend to like to have a cookie cutter sort of template approach to, to security best practices and hygiene, this may not really work so well where SaaS is concerned. Absolutely. Um, it's not that you don't speak security, it's you don't speak the language of the cloud providers. Every major SaaS provider has implemented authorization differently, access control and sharing differently. They have a different log format. I use the language analogy. You know, it's not that you don't speak, it's you don't speak 50 languages and you don't have time to go become fluent in 50 different languages. You need a translator. And so that's where you know, App Omni comes in and that we can be that universal translator for SaaS because security teams tend to know what they need to do. They know what controls they want to have in place. What they don't know is how has the business configured it and what does the correct way look like for that given SaaS application. Um, let's shift the perspective slightly to that of the, the CISO. How do you see um, security and the role of the CISO changing within today's corporations and, and, and even, I guess, uh, public sector environments? Well, I was a CISO for a long time and you know I saw the role change when I was in it uh, before I, I founded App Omni. But one of the biggest things that I've seen is the business has taken a step towards cybersecurity and they've needed to because it, there's business critical disruption. But I'm seeing the most successful CISOs take two or three steps towards the business in better understanding their business needs, their business stakeholders, and it, not just the technical bits of security, but how does that impact business operations and you know, risk to business function. And I think the pandemic kind of taught us that, that when we had to suddenly all work from home and change our models, IT and security learned a whole lot about business applications and operations that maybe they didn't have visibility to before. So I think that that lens of the CISO has to not quite have an MBA, but needs to understand the business far more than they have in, say, even 10 years ago. Um, looking ahead, what, what sort of challenges do you see for the CISO out on the horizon? Well, we're, we have CISOs that are being asked to do more with less. The attack surface is only growing. Remote work and the explosion of cloud is definitely part of that. And then I think we're seeing a regulatory landscape that you now need to comply with regulations across many different geographies, and you figure out how does that impact my business operations? What systems are even in scope? So I feel that CISOs are being asked to do more with less, with less resources and a much more difficult landscape. That all leads to automation. And I think that you know, security orchestration, automation, and now with AI, we're, we have technologies that are enabling that allow us to do much more with less because truly I have not met a CISO that feels like they have all the resources they need. Of course. They have the team size they need, that they have everything under control. It's almost a constant game of triage of what are my most burning problems and how do I go address those today. What are you hearing from CISOs with regard to AI, specifically generative AI, which, which threatens to really upend the, the entire security industry? Absolutely. I think that people need to much more know security as code. They need to understand we expect things to be exactly this way and we need to be able to measure that against a baseline. We need to continuously monitor it to make sure the things that we think are in place are in place. Because you're right, AI, generative AI, it can impersonate humans very, very well. And there's some you know, poor authentication practices that are based on human interaction that now AI can script and impersonate a human fairly effectively. So you can't just rely on authentication anymore. You need to look at what people are doing. I like to say you don't put all of your cameras at the front door of the bank. You have cameras in the sure. bank at the high risk areas for a reason because you know you can't stop the bad guys just at the front door. So we need to assume that authentication will be compromised. We need to assume that the bad guys will somehow find a way in and we need to monitor what activity is happening inside and what they're changing inside. Great insights on SaaS security and the future challenges for CISOs, Brendan. Thanks so much for joining us on News Desk today. Yeah, thanks Terry, great to be here. We've been talking with Brendan O'Connor with App Omni. This has been Terry Sweeney for Dark Reading News Desk. Thanks for joining us for this segment. We'll see you next time.